Now, somebody kills somebody, everybody got family. Somebody relate to him or somebody cool with him. You kill him. Now, everybody that, that he was close with is trying to kill you. It, it's a never ending. Or they going to kill us. Let's kill somebody close to him. Right. How does that end? How y'all so stop that? It, it don't stop. Shit. It's to everybody, all the people that play in the game. It's gone. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's the last man standing. It's either you're going to be in jail, you're going to die, or you getting lucky around this bitch. No, I ain't never did murder for hire. I don't know who be wearing that wire. What's up, what it do, Drill Time TV checking in once again. And they saying your boy Lil Dirk was knocking off shit left and right, Muslim by day, killer by night. And they saying that's all, folks. It's over with. But it might be too early to count Lil Dirk you out just yet. Because he still got powerful people aligned with him that ain't jumped out the car yet. Oh, we most definitely go get into all that, so stay to the end, my friend. But first, let's revisit the underlay for the overplay. Check it out. Quando Rondo said he came up listening to Chicago Drill when he was about 12. He took a liking to the movement and even named himself after Rondo number 9. He stated when he made it in the industry, he looked at Lil Durk like Big Bruh. He said while everybody was charging for features and taxing and shit like that, Lil Durk never charged him a dime and jumped on his first album for GP, General Purposes. So basically, Quando felt in-depth loyalty-wise to Durk because they started out having a healthy relationship. And Quando, what all Quando wanted to do was be Durk boy, his homeboy, you know what I'm talking about? Be down with um, him and Vine. Man, I'll be back on day tomorrow, man, we gotta go to the old. I leave, I gotta go to New York tomorrow. I can't hear you. I leave. I gotta go to New York tomorrow. Oh, what's up? Look, I'm out the car. I'ma call you in a minute, bet, bro. I love you. Can't hear me. I love you too, bet, bro. I mean, man, it was a love. It was a. I had a relationship with the big bro. Not want to say his name. Mm -hmm. Not you feel me? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, cool. That was on my album. Okay. Like it was all love with us from my understanding. I've heard you say positive things about him. Even when it came down to doing music, like in the rap game, like I didn't even had like my own people tell me like, oh, it's this much for a feature. Like I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Like all right, bet I ain't mad at nobody, but I guess this how I go. Dude never charged me for a feature, none of that, knowing he could have. Like, I looked at it, I'm like, this the big bro. Like, big bro, a legend. Like, this had all the young rappers coming up in the game looking at him. Like, nigga, been listening to him since I've been 12. You feel me? So, from my understanding, it's all love. And Quando felt Dirk was his dog for life And he probably would have been Rumor had it At the time he was in talks to sign in the OTF But he decided to take his talent over there with NBA Youngboy It was very obvious that King Von was trying to get a response out of YB YB a straight catching his back And did everything in his power to get his attention Including allegedly having relations with his child's mother Damn My baby father called me and told me like Yeah, with the whole situation, it was already deep. Right, and I was still talking to him. Cause that, that's what to do with me. Stop playing with like, oh, you got a bus, what's up? I'm the air squad, I'm like, what's going on? Like, what's the problem? What's the problem? Like,
Oh, yeah, see what I'm saying? Quando Rondo was collateral damage. To start off, him and Vine appeared to be cordial. Vine must have felt that Quando already picked his side, and when they bumped heads, everything went haywire. And then niggas be choosing side when, like, like, say you don't fuck with a nigga, but you'll fuck with another nigga. But I guess he'll fuck with that nigga too. Harder than he fuck with you, so, so he don't fuck with you. You'll start see niggas get done following you and shit on Instagram yeah. and shit. Niggas oh, will stop man. talking to you and shit. Niggas will get there, you know? But you'll see niggas be getting closer. You'll be like, what the fuck? Like that's that's gay as hell. You just, and you like nigga, I only got a, no you know, issue with you. Nah, it, it's cool. It could be like that if that's how they want it to be. Cause I'm with that. I, I like that. Like let me know what it is though. But mm. the nigga only let you know a nigga see you again and be there. Yeah, yeah some And you don't wanna smack his ass on phone number, nigga be, be wrong, cause niggas really ain't like that. And right. they be acting like that. That'd be some of the whole shit, niggas be folks. Leading up to the day that wrote the future on November the sixth. 2020 in the park a lot of monaco hookah lounge quando said he was tired as fuck but he was about to let his boy run up in there so he can test his luck and see what he can snatch up in the last 15 minutes Lil tim said he'd stay back with quando and hold him down like a statue and quando need not fear because he in the cut like peroxide quando said as he was walking towards the other vehicle he seen a group of people and then went across their circle so he stopped and let them go past boom bam i walk i walk from the car i turn around to walk up next thing you know a nigga Hit me. You feel me? Boom, bam. It's a deadly shooting outside a hookah lounge. Rapper King Vaughn was one of the men killed. The GBI is now investigating because two officers also fired shots. Atlanta police spoke exclusively with Fox Eyes Eric Perry tonight about what they call a chaotic scene. Atlanta police describe it as a shootout between two groups of men outside a hookah lounge. Ultimately, six people were shot, two killed, and a woman hit by a car in what police describe as chaos. We're coming for you. Strong words from Atlanta Police Sergeant John Chafee for whoever's responsible for what's being called a huge shootout outside the Monaco Hookah Lounge Friday morning. We had a lot of rounds that were fired. It was a very chaotic scene. Six people shot, two dead, including Davon Bennett, a popular rapper also known as King Von, and police say it stemmed from an argument. Take a look at this video given to Fox 5 of the incident. You see several men pouring into the street. We saw the video moments before bullets start to fly and King Von was hit. It's extremely concerning to us that people would be so brazen and so bold as to commit a crime like this in front of a police officer. I'm told an off-duty officer in a marked vehicle with blue lights on working security for the lounge and an on-duty officer nearby rushed to the scene and did fire their weapons. But police are squashing rumors the officers were the ones who shot and killed the rapper. Dirk and NBA Youngboy once had a cordial music relationship. I believe they possibly got a song or two together. But after the loss of King Von, their relationship would never recover. Living fans to believe if Dirk would have never picked up King Von beef, musically, he would have been on a whole nother level. With YB and Quando Rondo as allies in the music industry, but unfortunately, we'll never see that happen. A three second scuffle cost King Von his life, Quando Rondo his career, and Dirk possibly his future. Leading up to these multiple murder for hire allegations. Can't believe whatever you want, I got your folks here. Uh -huh. Lil Dirk appeared in federal court Friday afternoon, charged with a allegedly masterminding a cross-country murder-for-hire plot that can land him decades in prison. Let me catch y'all up to speed to let y'all know what we know for a fact. Check it out. Brown Eyes and Flocker from Lil' Faux Mob TPG was the identified shooter. That the fear saying that was recruited by OTF Didi in the murder-for-hire of Quando Rondo. I guess Lil' Pal became a casualty of war being at the wrong place at the wrong time. They saying OTF Boogie was his driver, why OTF Vonnie paid for the guns, cars, hotels, etc. Both of the shooters being from L4M hood left the drill fans baffled. And they thought it was real random being that little Dirk in tandem with hoods like Tay Town, Lamron, and O'Block. That a bag of that magnitude to get dropped in the direction of Lil' Faux Mob. But as we can see, OTF Diddy then had rapport with L4M because he seen in one of their members' video at the 32nd mark about a year ago. You would have thought careful coordinating and planning went into play, but obviously that wasn't the case. Them boys fried green tomatoes. I read the whole indictment and guess what? He don't say shit about no wire, no wire tie as a grown man. Cause man, I just ain't got it in me to sit on this internet and make up lies and spread misinformation knowing the shit I'm saying could possibly get dude and his whole family knocked the fuck off. And that's one thing about the blogs. They gon' play dangerous games from the comfort of their living spaces. Nowadays, the blogs ain't got no conscience or integrity and willing to get plenty hurt. Yeah, as long as them checks rolling in on the 21st. Seem like Dirk got arrested and this whole internet shit them turn into tabloids, make believe, whatever you can make a motherfucker believe, I guess. At this point, he worth more being a snitch than not a snitch to bloggers, nigga. They not gonna correct shit. But understand this, if Jam did 12 years and got out in 2022, uh -huh. 
and later went back in for the gun charge in 2023. Okay. Then how in the fuck was he wearing a wire for two years on OTF? And OTF Jam was only on the streets for 15 months in the past 14 years. Think about it. If the Fed's whole intent was to plant Jam back on the streets after him doing 12 years to wear wire and shit to take down the empire of OTF, and he they top informant, co-conspirator, then why the fuck is he getting locked up with no bond for a punk-ass pistol case? Man, to my observation, the Fed's be letting the rats and informants run rapid in Chicago, man. I seen a motherfucking informant on DJU with a 50-round drum, bitch, and he was a um, motherfucking a habitual offender. But your boy Jim gets slammed back in the can for a blammer. Come on, man, make it make sense. In the recent clip of No Jumper, Adam admitted that one of his workers willingly moved the goalposts over a troll post knowing that the shit he was putting out wasn't true for clicks and views. Hit the like button. Yeah, the the funny thing about that is that we're all talking about it in the No Jumper group chat, having the conversation of should we post this or not, even though it's just a rumor, we don't really have any evidence to back it up. Meanwhile, Flacco immediately goes to his Twitter and starts acting like he has an inside source that told him for sure. I'm like, you're just using the source that I'm putting out there and I'm making it clear that we don't know if we 100% believe in it. Rebo in the Logway case. He doesn't give a fuck. He just sends Rebo that shit. Rebo just puts the shit up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some well, of his shit no, is no. up to date, but the Logway shit, I said, hey, it was fake news. He's like, he's like shit, it's already up. Shit, you know I'm saying? That shit crazy. This 2024, the blog's worse than the gang bangers. They'll get you killed from a distance and think nothing of it. So far, what we know, well, it never was a wire tap or nobody wore a wire. The wire rumor came from an OTF member posting about somebody completely unrelated to OTF Jam that snitched and was wearing a wire, obviously. But OTF Twin got dude face and name on that post, so I don't see how signals got crossed with the blogs. They did jam dirty, man. Them photoshopped his face to the interrogation pick and whole thing, man. Meanwhile, fans don't don't know what to believe. Naive than a bitch. They done sold y'all a dummy and ran with the money. Hell no. <laughs> Hold up, man. It's like they done sold y'all a dummy and then ran away with the money. Now remember, OTF Jim ain't get out to 2022. And the feds making an argument that Dirk told all his co-conspirators about the Quando Rondo bounty the day that King Von died in coded language, which is November the 6th, 2020 two years before Jam was even released. But I'ma link the documents in the description for those seeking the truth. Moving along, on August the 18th, 2022, the day before Lil' Pab murder, OTF members learned the Quando Ronda location from a longtime OTF affiliate, co-conspirator number four. So Didi, Flocka, Brown Eyes, and Boogie allegedly fly out to California from Chicago with a one-way ticket to San Diego, along with co-conspirator number two. Fed say on this same day, now Dirk traveled to California in a private jet with another conspirator, OTL Vani. How the story goes, Vani allegedly provided guns, ski masks, and hotel rooms for the killers on the OTF company car, fuck you talking about? They went through Vani phone records along with co-conspirator 3 and had reason to believe. A text message saying, don't book no flights under no names involved with me, came from the alleged ringleader of this orchestrated hit, Lil Dirk. Fed say they could link this phone to Lil Dirk from a text message he made in February 2022 self-identifying itself to an individual in Florida unrelated to this investigation. On the day of the murder, surveillance video shows that OTF followed Quando Rondo from his hotel and trailed him for hours leading up to the shooting. When Quando Rondo and Lil Pab stopped to get gas, flock of brown eyes and co-conspirator too parked back there in the alley, popped out and did their thing and got the fuck on. And 50 minutes after the shooting, the feds had them a case. They got surveillance cameras all through Beverly Hills. Little did they know, doing a hit in Beverly Hills is equivalent to doing a hit in Chicago Gold Coast. It had never ended end in your favor. Rest up, duck. So following surveillance of the vehicles led them to an in and out spot in LA, where OTF Diddy, Vani, and Flocka would arrive in murder vehicle number one. And Brown Eyes and Co-Conspirator 2 would arrive in a dark SUV. At this point, law enforcement was able to put faces to the ski mask that just jumped out and killed Lil' Pob in cold blood. And documents stated that OTF Diddy was responsible for the payment. A few hours later, Diddy, Flocka, Brown Eyes, Boogie, and Co-Conspirator 2 was on the next thing smoking back to Chicago. Not a feds are gonna argue that Dirk knew that they was on his trail, and that's why he made an attempt to publicly distance himself from suspected gang members and criminal activity by changing his name to Mustafa Abdul Malik and using Islam as a shield to do his dark deeds under. Fans are speculating that Dirk knew it was just a matter of time and his recent show at the United Center was in fact his going away party, and rumor got it that he wanted to make it a badge that they'd never forget. 
Feds say when they started raiding various suspects in Chicago, Dirk was trying to get out the country to a place for no U.S. extradition, but they pinched him right before he boarded the plane. And Vine influenced Dirk in ways you couldn't imagine. And Dirk knew what came with this shit at the end of the day, but just didn't believe that it could happen to him. Them boys was living life like a movie in front of the camera and behind the scenes paying off all the powers that be. I don't know all the circumstances around um, these accusations, but again, what I do know for sure is that you know here's um, another example of a young black man who grew up in severe trauma that led to life choices that he has been very open and vocal about um, healing from those choices. That's why he's been committed um, to finding um, his righteous path, um, seeking out you know truth and justice through his faith, while also investing in behavior and mental health support uh, for individuals. Look, our the, what will you do with the money? Well, as, as I said, um, right now we have allegations right, that. He has not been tried. And, and I, look, I understand the question. I don't, I don't want you to think I don't understand the question. You're, saying, okay, the you're, you're asking me a question about someone who has worked to transform his life, um, who has admitted um, that he is on a journey to transformation and has not been charged with anything. Oh, what, what, I'm sorry, has not been convicted of anything. And so if you're asking me if I should make a judgment on a black man before a full trial has actually come to fruition, I hope you do understand why it is not my position to, to determine the outcome of someone's life. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know when you're moving up the ranks. But if you play the game long enough, you'll pass the catch up. And it appeared that Dirk was moving smooth until Vaughn came home. And that's when he felt he had to prove his gangster and fuck around and caught that attempted murder in ATL with Vaughn. Remember, that's when they said they had the witnesses that seen Dirk out the window blowing and shit? Fire, fire, fire! But Fanny Willis, the DA that orchestrated the Young Thug case, threw that shit out. And Smirk was looking like a Teflon down for a minute, I ain't gonna lie. But now he in Cali, facing life behind bars or the death penalty and what can we learn from all this in drill they'll let you talk about the killings until you get a few million and they coming to see about you dirk was arguably at his peak and possibly let his ego trick him off the streets for the sake of having the satisfaction to say he slid back for Vaughn. but it ain't over till it's over they evidence saying dd paid for the hit and vonnie paid for the guns hotel etc and one of the co-conspirators paid for the flights and the matter of Vaughn, a pawn is always seen on the chessboard making sacrifices for the king and everybody got a role to play and sacrifices got to be made for the team and don't be surprised if the guys gracefully play the fall guys yeah i know it might sound fucked up but at the end of the day they only had one job and now i should protect the bad but talk to me i talk back and tell me what you know down below share this to all platforms and hit that notification bell so you can stay updated and tell a friend to tell a friend and i'ma slide back through like some church shoes when i get the next update because i believe dirk ain't want to do kwando nothing for real that was his homeboy in another parallel universe Hundo. shout out mr duvall drill time tv i'm out